Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, I'm here in my mother-in-law's uh, conservatory and my father-in-law's uh, because I was uh, about to go outside and film and it just started raining. Should have gone yesterday when it was beautiful uh, weather, but had too, much, too many other things to do, but not to worry. Now, we talked a little bit last time about total return, a different way of thinking about drawing an income from your investments. So I'm going to continue that theme and talk about the safe withdrawal rate. But as ever, before we do, I must say thank you to my friends down here in the bottom right, that's seven investment management who continue to sponsor me. Little itchy knows that. Sorry about that. Now, safe withdrawal rate. If you have a pot of money in retirement, say, you've, you know, while you've been working, you've amassed a sum of money and you want to now draw off it to supplement maybe a pension that you've got. The safe withdrawal rate is simply the amount that you can withdraw from your pot of money each year and know that it'll never run out. That's the safe withdrawal rate. Now, is there a kind of a universal safe rate, you know, that no matter what investment markets throw at you, you can withdraw from your pot of money and you know you're never going to run out of it. Well, that's the question really for this. And of course, the answer to that question determines, do you have enough to retire? So uh, let me give you a couple of examples a minute. Okay, here's an example of somebody who starts off with £500,000 and they've decided that they want to spend £25,000 a year of that. Well, uh, £25,000 is one twentieth of half a million. And so assuming that they keep this money under the mattress uh, and they get no growth on it, then they will run out of money in 20 years. They start at age 60, so after 20 years, they're age 80. This is the value of the money that's left. So each line is what it's worth uh, in that year. So after 20 years, it's all gone. But in reality, of course, nobody keeps half a million pounds under the mattress. So they're probably going to put it in the bank and they're going to get some interest on it. So let's say they manage to get 3% interest every year for the rest of their life. Well, that's a bit more healthy. So you can see now that instead of running out at age 80, they spend it all by about age 89, 90. The reason, of course, is because it's grown a little bit every year. Um, if they get 5% interest on it, just put that in then that's even better. They never run out of money. Remember, they're taking out £25,000 per year. So the first sort of variable which affects your withdrawal rate and how much you can withdraw is how much growth you're going to get on the money. But the second variable is inflation because currently these people are spending £25,000 a year. But because of inflation, that £25,000 is going to buy them a little bit less every year because inflation essentially is the increase in prices every year. So their loaf of bread and bottle of milk is going to cost them a little bit more next year uh, than it did this year. So let's just say that inflation is running at about 3%. Well, what a big difference. You know, they're getting 5% return on their money, but now they're going to run out again because inflation is eroding the buying power of their money. Now they're going to run out again at about age 85. So that's now two variables we've got to think about. We've got to think about the growth on the money and the inflation or the effect of inflation on the buying power of the money. Let's throw in another variable. Let's say that uh, these people or this person inherits £150,000 here at about age 74, 75. Well, that's helped, obviously. The curve was going downwards here. Um, and there's a little step up when the inheritance is received. And then the curve begins its downward trend. And now instead of running out at about 86, 87, they're running out at about 90, 91. So that sort of inheritance has bought them about an extra four years of living according to their means. So that's three variables now. Uh, the growth that they're going to get on the money, the eroding power of inflation, and when or if they perhaps get some more money in, like an inheritance. But real life, again, is very different because it's not going to be the case that they're going to get a fixed amount of interest or growth on their money every year. And it's not going to be the case that inflation is going to be the same every year. Nothing in life is that predictable. So let's just have a look at what happens when um, we randomize both the growth and the inflation. Well, you can see what a difference that has made. Uh, they're going to run out earlier 
age 79. Um, and it's not quite such a smooth curve, is it? You know, they had obviously a fairly bad first year there and then two or three pretty good years and then down a bit and then down a bit and then down. Oh, and then up a bit. Really good year there. You know, life is random like that. Inflation changes. Uh, growth rates change. If you've got money invested in the stock market, you can actually lose money. And so these are true variables. They don't stay the same every year. And so when you're thinking about how much you can draw off your money each year, we call that the safe withdrawal rate. Um, there are many variables at play. Okay, hopefully, you know, that just sort of gave you some things to think about. Um, is it possible to identify a single safe withdrawal rate? Well, I used to think that um, 4% was a good rule of thumb. There was some research done about that and it seemed all to stack up, but real life is different to theory. And, you know, bear in mind the three variables that we've just talked about, the investment return uh, or loss, the, you know, inflation and any other income or capital injections you might get from inheritances or whatever. You know, these are variables they change and everybody's different and life changes and throws things at you that you aren't expecting. And because of that, I'm now more convinced than ever that a safe withdrawal rate itself needs to be variable. And that just as when you were building up your pot of money throughout your working life to arrive at this you know, retirement, you've got a sum of money there that you can now begin drawing from and enjoying. Just as when you were building that, you were careful. When times are harder, you probably saved and spent a little bit less. When things were going well, you probably saved a bit more and spent a little bit more, had nicer holidays and stuff. I think that just carries on into retirement. And when markets are against you, or inflation is high, you probably want to spend a little less and just rein it in a bit. Whereas when things are going well, as they are at the moment in markets, you know, you might want to spend a little bit more. So the withdrawal rate itself, I think now needs to be variable. And if anything is, this is a perfect example of where financial planning can add value because with your advisor once a year, like I do with my clients, we can say, right, how was the income for the last year? Was it enough? What do you think you're going to need the coming year? Have you got any big things like you want to change the car or change the conservatory or whatever? Any big things like that that you want to do and plan your expenditure. And if markets are against you, then perhaps take that into account as well. So I hope that's helpful. Just a bit of a discussion about withdrawing money from your investments. Uh, thanks for watching this one and I'll see you next time.